Hi everyone, Rachel Stevens here. Rachel Stevens Photography for Women and RSP Actions. I've got my Facebook fan page here. If you're not a fan, please like us over on Facebook. That's where we keep everything up to date. Sean and I are active daily on that fan page. It's facebook.com forward slash Rachel Stevens Photography for Women. Stevens is with a PH. So give us a like over here. We'll hope to see you over there. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys the importance of using your history palette. So when you are watching my videos, or if you've seen me on Creative Live, then you've seen me flatten my images and save. I know that makes a lot of people nervous because every time you flatten and then you save it, it's like, oh, how do I go back? Well, I'm gonna show you how. This is gonna save you if you ever mess up somewhere, but you, there's a history states won't, the control Z won't go back far enough for you to, to um, get it. So instead of having to go all the way back to your raw file, this is how you do that. So we're going to go ahead and you have your history palette here. If your history palette isn't in here, go to window, history. It's going to pop up here. What you're going to do is you're going to click the drop down and we're going to go to history options. Now by default, this top line is checked. Automatically create first snapshot. What that does is when you open an image right over here in history, you can see it right here. It's automatically going to start open and um, new snapshot when you open an image. But what we're going to do, what we want, is we want to also click that second one, automatically create new sh snapshot when saving. So what that's going to do is every single time we flatten and save the image in your history palette, it's going to save a snapshot of that save state. So as I'm working an image, I might have, you know, 20 or 30 in here, snapshots. So if something happens, say I'm working an image, and then, you know, I'm working on it and way, way back, I somehow hit my brush right here and didn't notice a big white spot or even a tiny little spot. But if I'm making a 30 by 60 canvas, sure, you're going to see it. Well, instead of having to go back to my raw file to, to clean it up, what I do is I just go to my history palette and I find a snapshot that was taken before I made that mistake, select it, copy it, go back down to my last saved state, copy that over, and mask it over. So really quickly, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to create, I'm um, just going to do some stuff. <laughs> Let's see, what can I do here? Let's play around. All right. I didn't plan out what I'm actually going to do to demonstrate on this image, so I'm going to wing it because I like to live life on the wild side like that. Okay. All right, let's kind of make it a little cloudy looking and then let's, let's put a noise on it. Let's do like seven, and then let's, uh, what do you want, what else should we do? Let's do, um, let's do some gritty brushes or something. Let's see. Let's do, there we go. I'm just playing around here, people. All right. So let's just keep kind of messing around here. And you can see every time I flatten and save, it's saving the snapshots here. So I'm just going to continue to uh, manipulate the image. until just making a frame. There we go. All right. So let's say this is where I want it. So, and then I think, and then I see 
see. Something happened back here. Maybe I went too far. Maybe I like it back here instead with more matte to it and less dark. Maybe I don't. Maybe I decided, you know what? I don't really like the frame. I like it how it was. All I have to do, if the control Z won't go back far enough, I just go to the state where I liked it. Control A, control C, then go back down to where I was. Because let's say as I'm going, even though here what we're talking about is we're going to get rid of the frames. Maybe we didn't like it. But maybe during the process, I did some skin retouching or I did something, other kind of manipulations that I want to keep. This blur treatment on the, the, the chiffon, the tool that we have here. Maybe I want to keep that. So I don't want to have to go back and do that again. So I just control shift V to paste in place. And there I go. Now I've got that history state that I chose and I put it back. So then you can create, put a mask on there and then you can paint back in what you want to put back from that previous history state. So that will save you tons of time. Um, it's the reason why I can flatten and save and feel confident doing it. Keep my file size low so that it doesn't completely um, eat up all the memory on my computer and and shut down uh, Photoshop, which I used to have happen all the time to me when I was on a machine. I couldn't afford a really fast machine. So the machine that I could afford, it wasn't as capable of handing, handling Photoshop as the pro machine that I've had custom built for myself now. So having the files um, small as possible was really important for me and that's something that I've kept with. Um, even though now I have a machine that can handle much bigger processing speeds. So History palette, history options, make sure these top two are checked. You can do this maybe two or three times and then Photoshop is just going to remember. But um, do keep in mind that these history states do not permanently save. As soon as you close this image, all of these history states um, disappear. So if you are someone who wants to keep layers, you can always go through your history states and grab layers that you think you might want to save and just start to layer them on top of your PSD. And then you have them to save forever. So that is the lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please like us on Facebook. If you um, are interested in our Creative Live class, please go to Creative Live. Under instructors, you'll find Rachel Stevens. We did a three-day class. It's 20 hours plus lots of bonus material. Thank you so much and see you online.